Hello everyone, I'm Paul Price, CEO at Argyle, and welcome to this Executive Spotlight, where today we're sharing some thoughts about video marketing strategy. And in the course of the next 30 minutes or so, I hope to share with you uh, a variety of insights as to why video marketing is so important in the scheme of things for B2B marketers, as well as some of the things that you should be thinking about doing now if you haven't already in terms of executing your video marketing plan. But before I start the detail, uh, I would begin with a warning at the risk of oversimplifying some topics which are inherently very complex. I, I am about to make some sweeping generalizations in the interest of sticking to around that 30 minutes. And so uh, I am very much going to take uh, the helicopter view for most of this uh, presentation. There are some tactical things that I'll get into towards the end of it. But with that said, let me begin with just a view of the big picture so far as the things that are making video marketing so important. Why is it that this is, of all the forms of content marketing, becoming so valuable in terms of helping B2B marketers build their businesses? Now, one of the most important, I think, is this extraordinary change that's occurred since COVID in the sales model. I've spoken about this at other webinars before, that in the course of the last few years since COVID, that the sales model has increasingly shift, shifted to remote or digital engagement. And the days of sales reps uh, taking trips, uh, meeting in offices, uh, regardless of what product they're selling or service, are long over and that uh, employers, sales directors, marketers and so on are being a good deal more discriminating uh, in response to clients who are increasingly expecting service being delivered via digital channels, uh, whether that's B2B e-commerce in the case of the delivery of some services and products or it's simply engaging uh, with the organization, with the sales team. Uh, this is a very important step because it has a lot to do with what are the right types of content you need to prepare. And if you'd like to look into this a little bit more, this is a snapshot of numbers from a McKinsey study, which I found very, very valuable, uh, which you'll find freely available uh, on, uh, on your Google search uh, via uh, the title, something like the post-COVID sales model. The other very important shift that's going on in the United States in particular uh, is this extraordinarily important transition between generations. We're seeing biographics, uh, that is the folks that we're trying to persuade to buy your products and services. We're seeing those bi biographics change predominantly because baby boomers are retiring. And to give you some sense of the scale of this shift, it's something in the vicinity of eight to 10,000 baby boomers that are retiring a day. It's a big number and it's never been seen in this size or scale before in the United States, simply because they're just, there haven't been population segments this large. Right behind them, of course, are everybody born pretty much since 1980. That's millennials, Gen Z in particular. And those two cohorts make up the, the by far the largest population uh, in the United States. And they bring along with them their behavioral differences according to their age, in particular, different media habits, different uh, preferences and prejudices towards what increasingly is a preference for digital engagement of some description, building on the slide that I, I talked about previously. And by virtue of this, these two changes and, and a few other things that I'll gloss over for now, there's a great deal more dependence on content before engaging with sales. These are very consistent uh, responses that we see in our own research when we conduct it on behalf of our clients into B2B buying behaviours. And in particular, the, the, the prevalence amongst those in various stages to be looking at as many as three to five, but more than 11 uh, pieces of content in the course of their research and discovery phase, the different types of content required and the different themes that those con that content carries, of course, matters a great deal according to what stage in the buying process they are. But regardless of this, the aggregate of this is this extraordinarily high priority being given to available content to help buyers make their research and discovery process go well. 
And amongst these, uh, it goes without saying, is the increasingly important role of social media's growing multi-platform role in B2B buyer discovery and research. Facebook can, uh, features something like 70% of the time when it comes to buyers attributing where they're obtaining content uh, for their discovery and research process is concerned. So too, uh, a large, uh, an abundance of buyers, some 60% or so using YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Reddit, TikTok, Quora, all of these platforms are playing a role, some of them more prominently than others, in helping B2B buyers figure out what they need to know. And this is something not to be ignored because once again, it sort of shapes the sort of content requirements that work best in these channels. And yes, of course, video is a very important consideration simply because of this fact. Um, it is also goes without saying that the most effective lead generation platforms are all video friendly with a couple of exceptions, clearly SMS and, and, and some other uh, paid search uh, channels aren't as friendly to video as email and social and digital display and so on. And that is to say that whether um, it's the channels that you're using the most or it's the channels that are considered best ROI highlighted here in orange, video is an extremely compatible format to these channels. It adapts exceptionally well to supporting the most valuable content formats, whether that's research, whether it's case studies, of course, webinars are built for video, um, whether it's a white paper or e-papers and so on. Video has a tremendous compatibility, again, with these particular types of format. And for that reason, it presents an overwhelming case to use. So let me give you a few takeaways from the big picture, so to speak, before I get into some of my recommendations. Of course, the first is that biographics and the correlating behavior are shifting beyond the reach of traditional marketing. This is not to be ignored and there's a tremendously important implication for all of B2B marketing, not just video, but today it's particularly pertinent. Secondly, that multiple digital channels are much more necessary to achieve effective reach amongst the B2B buying community. When I say community, of course, I don't just mean the buyer themselves, but the growing community of influencers that are around them making, helping make the decision about what to purchase or who to engage. And the fact that needing so many channels is a, a question of building up reach using a layered approach of multiple channels, all of them, affecting some level of reach, but on the aggregate, creating a high level of a reach by, by virtue of what they do and the way in which B2B buyers use them. And, and, and the corollary of that is that content formats and themes drive engagement in the buying cycle. Content is clearly very, very important to the way in which buyers are being uh, influenced in, their, in making their decision. And, and therefore, content marketing, and particularly video-based content marketing, is essential to success. And so with that in mind, let me now go to uh, some things that you should be thinking about doing now when it comes to your video marketing plan, not necessarily in order of priority or importance, uh, although I think the first one is going to be one which I hope resonates because it's often overlooked just how dramatically different we are when it comes to using different devices and screens for uh, uh, for consuming content. And, and my, my overwhelming preference when asked this question is to what do I focus on when I'm creating content? What of all these different devices do I think about the most? I, I suggest to you that you think mobile because only video is as effective on 60 inch screens as it is six inch screens. And so, as you can see from this chart, this extraordinary growth of uh, mobile only uh, usage and, and uh, content consumption, you can see that's grown at an extraordinary rate of 25% per year. It may well be decelerating but that's nevertheless a very, very compelling argument to make sure that you take a mobile first approach when it comes to thinking about video marketing, because only video, as I've said, 
has the uh, versatility to work in a small screen as much as a big screen. Secondly, that you should think about using the most popular story formats to guide your execution. There are some particular stories which are very popular and widely recognized as the most effective in B2B storytelling. Product specifications and functionality are clearly one of them. Product comparisons are enormously popular, as you can see from these numbers. Product success stories, it's always good to talk about the way in which a product has helped someone else succeed. Content to specifically show value to in internal stakeholders, again, is a very important story to tell to continue to provide the support internally that you want to get. Product tutorials, guidance to solving a problem. These are all very, very meaningful, reliable, uh, and popular story formats that you can adopt uh, for thinking about your video marketing uh, strategy. And, and, and that's because, amongst other things, by using a customer journey, mapping the right apertures helps us understand when and where we should, along this increasingly complex journey of many influences and more and more process, when and where we can place video in its various forms as stories, as, as lengths, as, as, uh, as cadence, at, at points of time when they will be most optimum in their ability to influence buyers. And one of the things I think it's come to uh, be uh, a, a standard, so to, so to speak, is LinkedIn's increasingly uh, prevalent role in, in the lead generation process. But not only is LinkedIn a clearly a very powerful platform for lead generation and engagement, but LinkedIn is also a very important cross-platform. There are very, very interesting synergies. If you're, an, if you're a LinkedIn user, you are probably a Facebook user to the order of about 90%. Likewise, Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube, I'm going to talk about YouTube in a second, uh, Twitter, and so on. You can see how high the correlation between LinkedIn users and other social platforms is and this is not to be overlooked because uh, we we are often uh, we find it somewhat challenging to think well hey why am I using Facebook for B two B marketing you're using Facebook to, for B two B marketing because of its sheer utter reach in the billions uh, amongst the total uh, social media audience out there and it comes as no surprise to me that therefore Facebook and LinkedIn together could combine to be very very powerful. Uh, channels for the average B2B marketer and their video uh, strategy. And it would behoove it would behoove us all to remind ourselves that we are in this extraordinarily other important shift, something akin to the date to, to the birth of the internet era may be more important than that. And, and that, of course, is when it comes to video marketing, you must, must, must take advantage of generative AI. I'm not going to get into which ones are better than the others. Um, there's generative AI applications for just about every phase or type or format of content. In particular, however, there are tremendously or already a tremendously important number that are very powerful converters from voice to video. Uh, and so it, it behooves you to spend some time getting familiar with ones that you like, along with others that give you the ability to amplify uh, your video marketing through other AI generative content capabilities. And on the subject of some things that AI, uh, gen generative AI can produce is it's exceptionally good at animation. And animation is something that I, again, urge you to think very, very carefully about because it can be just as compelling as live motion um, or, uh, you know, the other uh, simpler video formats that come to mind when we say, say the word video. Animation is something that um, can tell stories in an extraordinarily compelling way. I want to spend a little bit of time on YouTube and what are you doing about your YouTube channel and in particular video SEM 
and SEO. And in the back backdrop, there is General Electric's uh, YouTube channel. Of course, it's an exceptional example by virtue of its execution and uh, and its volume. And uh, I appreciate that for many in today's audience, we're not looking at at scale of the type of GE. But regardless, I thought it would be worth pointing it out as an example of best practice. Now, one of the things that is very important to understand about YouTube is that it behaves with a very, very long tail. Over 2.9 million channels are, are, um, are having about 10,000 or more subscribers, whereas only 1.2 thousand channels have over 10 million subscribers. So this very, very long tail is important to note because you're not therefore thinking of yourself as competing with gargantuan mammoth YouTube channels uh, for um, a, a relatively dwindling number of subscribers. Quite the contrary, you should be thinking about a highly focused, very targeted, very strategic role that your YouTube channel plays because to add to this very important point of video SEM and SEO, YouTube, of course, along with Google being part of the Google family, is highly prejudiced in, in, in its um, leaning towards anything related to Google product. And therefore, SEM and SEO through Google, paid or organic, um, has a great deal to do with your YouTube channel and the content and the hashtags and your SEM and SEO strategy that sits with your YouTube channel. So when uh, all of this comes together, uh, your YouTube channel, in my view, could be one of the most important, most powerful sources of leads uh, and engagement uh, for your business when it's done well. Uh, and uh, I urge you, if you haven't already, to give this uh, considerable time uh, and thought as you go into uh, your video marketing strategy. Thinking Fast and Slow uh, was written by Daniel Kamen in uh, the 1990s. Uh, he won the Nobel Prize for Behavioral Economics. This is easily one of the most influential books I've ever read in my professional career in marketing services. Uh, it's changed my mind completely about the way in which we go about engaging uh, in uh, the world and the way in which we go about learning. And what, in a nutshell, this all means is Cayman helps us understand through the science of the book. And I compel you to read, I urge you to read the book if you haven't already. It's a little bit of a slog, but it is absolutely uh, earth shattering in terms of its enlightenment in this regard, is that we are wired to be lazy and irrational. We're really not paying attention. And so as Cayman helps us understand, there are a couple of remedies when it comes to engaging people in that state of mind that we are for the vast majority of our lives in. And that is to be simple and to be emotional. Um, these are very important rules when it comes to constructing effective video. And uh, at the risk of uh, over belaboring this point, um, there are a couple of suggestions I have when it comes to length of video and format of video. Um, if you are thinking about, as I would recommend you do, very short video formats for many of the social media platforms that we've talked about, in particular, TikTok and YouTube and Instagram, for example, which as you've seen in previous slides are very, very strong partners with LinkedIn uh, users, then you should think about lengths of no more than 10 to 20 seconds. And these, uh, these, this short format should be very highly visual and focus on values, not attributes, not even really benefits but the highest emotional values you can attach to your story as a business, whether that's inspiration, whether it's um, love, whether it's uh, engagement, whether it's partnership and so on. You get the idea, but you, you, you want to pitch as highly as you possibly can. 
if you've got in mind something more medium of length again i would think of medium length video in the format of 90 to 120 seconds at the most and i would be very mindful of not only being very very visual which is an absolute standard issue for any video of course but also the right pace people tend to underestimate how quickly you can convey information in a video format we are biologically equipped to learn in in terms of uh video very very quickly i'm going to illuminate on that statement later in this presentation and finally if you've got something long in mind if you have to have a lengthy video format then three to five minutes is the most i would stick to the days of expecting people to sit down and listen to you and your team do some sort of demonstration uh, on a youtube channel for example or in a, some form of uh, medium beyond uh, that in social media channels um, are very, very limited unless you've got an exceptionally compelling story that can be told in that format. I would be thinking about long being three to five minutes. After that, um, you're in webinar territory, just like we're doing now. And of course, I urge you to consider webinars. Of course, they're such an important format, but they are easily the best way to handle anything longer than those recommended uh, lengths. And in the course of preparing your video marketing strategy, it goes without saying that you should be asking your customers about what they're expecting to hear from you. Research in this way is very, very important. And it doesn't have to be terribly complicated or formal. It can be simply one-to-one -one interviews with a good many of your customers as to what are the sorts of things that they're expecting to hear from you and how might that be conveyed to them in video. And if if they were to watch video, where would they expect to encounter video from you? All of those very, very simple questions are very, very worthy of helping construct a solid strategy in video marketing and something that should be ongoing. I'm, I'm going to conclude by saying something that by now I hope is very, very obvious, but it, it, it's so important to think of always being visual. 80% of what we learn is learned through the retina. We are wired to learn visually and we learn visually at an extraordinarily rapid rate, um, much, much faster uh, than folks ever, uh, than folks assume. And so with that said, I hope that as a result of this, you've got plenty to think about when it comes to video marketing strategy. We would be, through our content marketing services at Argyle, very, very happy to help you in terms of both research services to generate the insights you need to help drive your video marketing strategy. And then we have substantial content marketing services available for lead generation and conversion from email and database marketing to, of course, multi-channel video marketing we're doing on behalf of some very, very uh, long-standing and, and happy clients. And of course, those long format content marketing story forms that are so important, such as ebooks, e white papers, case studies, and finally search and social. All of these things we would be delight delighted to help you with. Our 2024 event products this year feature our half day forums, full day summits, webinars, which we produce at a quite a large scale uh, on behalf of many, many clients. Um, our live experiences in executive dinners, executive workshops, uh, and then ultimately our integrated event plans running many months, generating a targeted lead amount, uh, all available uh, to you. And we hope that you'll take some time to take a look uh, through our website on the detail of that. Um, I draw your attention to our second half calendar, which is available now, it was released only a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and you can see here the various communities from CFO, to finance team, SMB finance, the HR team. If you sell to the digital marketing team, you sell to the CIO, to the CISO, or to any AI decision makers. If you sell to any of these communities, we have got some great events coming up that will help drive engagement for you and deliver the leads that you're looking for amongst what are very hard to reach uh, decision makers. 
these are some of the businesses that we very, very proudly work with on a regular basis, and we hope that you'll be amongst those to consider us to join this uh, group in using event marketing services and our content marketing services for the benefit of the building your business. And folks, on behalf of everyone at Argyle, we're very, very glad that you spent the time today to listen to our point of view on video marketing, and I hope you have the best of very success in your execution of it going forward. Thank you so much.